Hi everyone, my name is Jay Sable. I'm the Executive Director of the One Community 501c3 Nonprofit Organization. And I'm here for our weekly check-in, talking about our progress for the week of September 2nd, 2013. This is our video blog number 28. And as is the format with this, I'm going to go through a quick overview, a bullet point of everything that we've accomplished in the last week. And then I'll go into a little bit more detail on each of those bullet points uh, just to kind of give you some background and, and uh, additional information on exactly what's happening behind the scenes. Uh, the purpose of our organization, we are a highest good for all organization. The purpose of our organization is to demonstrate true stewardship, to be stewards of the earth, to be stewards uh, working together to create a planet that works for everybody, for all life on this planet, and uh, is sustainable. And so our process or our method of doing that is to create open source blueprints for sustainable and self-replicating teacher demonstration communities, villages, and cities to be built all around the world and to teach this model and share this model of stewardship. And so one community is the first of these cities and everything that we're doing is, is with the mindset of for the highest good of all and open source sharing all aspects of civilization, food, energy, housing, um, social architecture, recreation, and open source education model because these things are interconnected. And so let's go through the bullet points of everything that we've accomplished. So in the last week, we've had a very busy week. Um, first and foremost, we finished, finished, finished the Tropical Atrium page. Uh, last week I did the happy dance and I said maybe I would do another happy dance after uh, we finished the very last piece. The last thing that we had to do was put the harvest details, the harvest projections on that page and so now it's complete. Check it out. Very small happy dance. It was pretty anticlimactic. It wasn't a lot of work that needed to be done because we'd done everything else over the past three months on that page, but now it is completely complete uh, until we actually start building it and then we'll add all the videos and everything else that goes along with uh, teaching people how to duplicate every aspect of that, that structure. So very exciting to see the planning and harvesting details done. Check, click on the link and you can read about, write, read about that. Um, Wallapini 1, the frost-free arid zone from our food infrastructure. All of the plants are now complete on our harvesting and uh, planting and harvesting page for that, which includes um, all the details for uh, planting details, descriptions, as well as uh, how those would be received, why they were placed, where they were placed in that food production house, and also uh, cultural considerations. And that house is very interesting because it's a frost-free arid zone. So in that house, we'll have 26 different species. And of those 26 different species, five are classified as endangered and nine are classified as vulnerable. So it's really a unique food production house with foods that most people have never even heard of, let alone tasted. And so um, it's going to be a really interesting house. I invite you to check that out. Uh, we also update our food infrastructure site map, which is pretty cool. It's got all the food planting maps on it now. I'll include that site map on the uh, written blog. So if you want to see that, you can take a look or go to our food infrastructure pages and you can see it. Uh, hoop houses cost analysis is done. Last week we put the hoop houses page up. Last thing that we needed was the cost analysis. That is up and now we are researching plastic. So with the hoop houses, uh, there's a lot of different choices out there for plastic. And we're looking for something that's going to last for 20, 30 years. And so we started a conversation. We did some research. And we found what's up there right now is a company that we found that will ship direct from China six millimeter uh, polycarbonate plastic that will last 10 years. But we think we found a, a new plastic that's based in the U.S. and might last 30 years. So we're doing tons of research on that right, on that right now. Look at the cost analysis on that because uh, we want to build hoop houses that are going to last decades, not a year. And most of the plastic that uh, you research and you buy, say at Lowe's or Home Depot, not going to last longer than a year. So we're doing that. Um, we This last week, we finished researching rabbitry and rabbit breeds. And so I'll be lucky if I can get all this stuff up this week. But on my list is rabbits and uh, rabbitry and rabbit breeds apiary and bees, so an apiary is bees and bees set up. We've done all the research for that. Uh, chicken breeds and chicken coops set up. We've done the research for that as well. So I'm hoping to get those up this week. Might not happen until next week. Um, and we continue behind the scenes to work on food forest planning. And so we've got images and stuff done and you know, we're, that page is gonna be coming together this week as well. Very exciting on that. Um, on Earthbag Village, we are, Devin Porter is doing some amazing 
work on that right now. Uh, and then Bear, our team member Bear, has done uh, the research on septic. So let's see, we've uh, swapped out the bathrooms and showers and done a little bit of change to the layout for some benefits that that will provide for recycling of the gray water. Um, we're doing a lot of work on 3D with the windows and getting those in. I haven't actually gotten the, uh, the most recent export, so I'm not quite sure what the picture is going to look like. I'll put it up when I get the blog up tomorrow, the written blog up tomorrow. So, but uh, this week, all the stuff that we were talking about and going back and forth and collaborating on was the window details. We did some windows around the uh, south entry to increase solar gain for the tropical atrium. And we also um, uh, swapped out those, uh, we did some changes to the whole entryway to the tropical atrium there. And then we talked a lot about the general layout as far as where the different domes are and then where the windows are gonna be placed. There's a south facing window and a north facing window so we can have airflow in there. Pretty sure that's where we're going to keep that. And then um, also with the Earth the Earth Bank Village, they did all the research on the septic, exactly how large the septic tanks need to be to um, to meet the county's needs because we need to do a traditional septic. And our vermiculture bathrooms are set up so that it integrates vermiculture with traditional septic so that they can be built in pretty much any county because you meet the county's needs. And then you can demonstrate that the vermiculture toilets are safe and produce soil that doesn't have any... Uh, viruses or bacteria or anything that's dangerous in that and then that that can be used and so um, we've done the research on exactly what septic we would need for a village of this size and um, and so we've got that and hopefully that's going to go up on the website that should go up on the website this week as well and then also we're doing all the research for the communal bathrooms so you have the communal toilets you have the communal bathrooms you know which is all the details from hair dryers to soap dispensers because we'll be providing all the best and uh, healthiest soap and things that won't cause problems for the plants. So when people visit uh, their shampoos and all the different things that people are putting in their hair and on their bodies are uh, hopefully minimized as far as what's going into the soil and uh, and into the water and thus and the plants. So um, we're doing all that research on all of that. Everything from, hey, what's the best toilet? What's the best shower heads? Shower heads are something that we're putting a lot of time and energy into um, because low low volume uh, shower heads or water saver shower heads are, uh, to put it lightly in my own experience, because I've used a bunch of them, a delicate matter. There's a lot of different versions out there and the way that they put out water, some people like some, other people like others. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create an open source page um, now for those shower heads with an intent to feature several different shower heads, at least eight different shower heads on the property is what it's looking like we're going to do. And then we can do reviews on those and um, talk to people and see what people like the most because having a water saving shower head can make a huge difference in the amount of water that you're using uh, and so and at the same time you know shower is something that you do every single day so it's important to us to uh, create the absolute best shower situation we can while still saving water so we're doing all that research behind the scenes um, the Sago Center City Hub is moving along in 3D and we're also doing a lot of research on that so in addition to uh, well, no, septic system was for the Earth Bag Village. So for the Sago Center, our research and the work that we're putting in behind the scenes is on dormer windows and sliding glass doors, exactly what the dimensions are. We found out that we're probably going to have to raise the domes up a couple feet, which is a big design. Well, it's not a huge design change, but it's going to definitely take some time to, to adjust the CAD. It's going to take some time to adjust uh, the 3D uh, renderings that we've done on that as well. So, but... Raising that up will allow us to put in the sliding glass doors that we want to put in, which will be very large sliding glass doors to give us pass passive cooling and heating. So passive heating in the wintertime because it's low and where the sun's on the horizon. We're doing a lot of sun studies and stuff on that. And then, of course, passive cooling because we'll be able to create a really cool draft right through those structures. And we've been looking at the direction where the wind's going to be coming from on the property and placing those things on the Sego Center. And then also placing all of, we're starting to place all of the different appliances in the uh, kitchen as well as we've done an extensive amount of work on the um, on the inside of the Sego Center. So there's a mezzanine level and I'll include pictures of this stuff in the written blog as well but for those who don't look at the written blog the mezzanine level there's a section here that that cuts into the domes so that people can sit there and look down into the social dome or look down into the dining dome and so now those details have been added in 3D 
which is very cool because you can kind of see where, oh, okay, people are going to sit here. They're going to look down into that area. There's a window there that can be opened up so you get that nice airflow coming through there, which if it's warm, you know, you'll be able to open that up, especially in the, in the, you know, kind of in the fall time when it might be a little cold outside, but too warm inside. You can have that nice warm air if you're sitting out there enjoying that space. And in the summertime, you could open up and have a breeze coming through there while you might listen to live music or something happening down in the social dome or see what's going on in the dining dome. And so very cool design element. And those things are now in 3D. And then also in 3D, We've got the cupola uh, done this week where we have pivot doors on the cupola. So on the top of the Sago Center duplicable city hub, there's a door, an east and a west door. So you have sunrise and sunset that would go through those doors. And those doors are pivot doors. So if you have the door like this, you can actually pivot it this way and push them open and open up the entire east and west wall. And that's for you know meditation classes or seminars, things like that that are being taught up there. You can really enjoy the sunrise and the sunset, a completely unimpeded view of those things from what will most likely be the highest point on the entire property. And so, and that's the whole point of Sego Center. You can read about that uh, on the Sego Center if you just go to onecommunityglobal.org forward slash Sego, S-E-G-O dash center. You can read about the purpose of this building and how many resources it saves by creating a duplicable city hub instead of building all these details into the individual structures. So got all that stuff done, and then of course, like I said, we're working on the dormer windows and sliding glass doors for that because we want to do, we want to do design that structure as a lead pat platinum structure and also uh, ADA compliant and as well uh, passively heated and cooled if we can, and so that's what we're working on with that. And uh, additionally, uh, we welcomed three new partners to the team this week. We welcomed uh, Devin Porter, and I'm not sure if I might have mentioned Devin Porter on last week's because we welcomed him. I, we might have welcomed him on Monday, so I may have mentioned him last week, but Devin's been helping us for a long, long time. He just finally got us his bio so that we could put him up on the website. We also uh, welcomed Jamie Kistner to the team. Jamie is a Wi-Fi specialist, and so we've started working this week on creating our remote internet hub, which we're going to open source how to do that as well. How can you create the most amazing internet uh, anywhere in the world? And that's what we're looking at. You know, fiber is an option for a lot of people if they live close to cities, but it's not an option for anybody that's that's going to be remote. And we're remote enough to where fiber is not an option. And so what we're designing is an open source internet hub that will Wi-Fi enable the entire property then and allow us to meet our open source and free sharing goals, which is... If you've read our website, our goal is to become the number one provider of open source and free shared sustainability information in the world within six months, which means we need internet on day one. We need internet before anybody moves to the property because we will be open sourcing everything that we do from the setup, from the from the uh, governmental setup, from the, from the decision-making setup, the consensus process, and how that evolves with our organization and everybody on the team will be trained in consensus before we go down the property, it's a big part of our organization and what we're focused on. But also, all the little details like, hey, how do you set up food? How do you set up the recreational model? How do you get organized as far as you know building the Earthbag Village? And most of that stuff is up on the website. The details of how to do that are already there. But it, the evolution of it is going to be really important You know, as we move towards complete, creating a complete set of tools, tutorials, and resources as this whole Earth stewardship, stewards of the Earth, model that we're putting forward, covering everything from our energy infrastructure to the food to the housing, all of this stuff, you know, we're open sourcing. And so it's going to amount to, we've calculated out well over 300 videos in the first six months, video tutorials, full spreads with blueprints and diagrams and then hands-on tutorials on exactly how to do everything and then the feedback from the public that will help us refine and make all that stuff better. So Jamie is designing that system for us. That's his specialty and we're super excited to start sharing those details as they come together. Uh, and then also, so Devin Porter's been working on the Earthbag Village, Jamie's working on Wi-Fi, and then we welcomed the Seed Savers Exchange to our partner team as well. And so the Seed Savers Exchange is a nonprofit organization that is organizing uh, small farmers around the United States, around the world, that save seeds and contribute them, heirloom seeds, organic heirloom seeds, to the Seed Savers Exchange, and then you can change, you can trade and and buy and share seeds globally. It is the coolest organization, and so we are super excited to be partnered with them, and uh, as one of our primary sources for seeds for the entire food infrastructure 
of uh, one community and as part of the one community botanical garden model where we will be providing seeds to the Seed Savers Exchange for some really unique foods which like the things that you'll see grown in Wallapini 1 which I said was done and Wallapini 2 with you know 50 different types of apples and 50 different types of figs you know what an opportunity to share these different things and so we have you know we're bringing together more biodiversity than most people have ever seen or even heard of on our property and so we want to be able to share that as part of our open source goals and seed savers uh, exchange is one way that we'll be able to do that so that's the update I uh, went in a little bit more detail than I wanted to on all the different things. Got a lot of cool stuff. I guess I don't really need to review it. I'll just leave it at that and say that it's been a busy week. And um, as always, if you want these updates, you want to follow our progress, join us on Facebook, facebook.com uh, forward slash one community updates or forward slash one community fans on Twitter, uh, one community org, twitter.com forward slash one community org. Of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And you can get uh, these notices. We do weekly, obviously, weekly video blogs and our written blogs. You can get these notices in your email. And as always, thanks for following our project. Uh, if you'd like to get involved with what it is that we're doing, there's always opportunities to join us. And we're always looking for uh, new people that would like to come on board with our nonprofit organization to help us create the open source blueprints for true and comprehensive earth stewardship that includes everything from energy, to food, housing, to recreation, social architecture, comprehensive education models to address everything that's going on in our world right now because we have the ability to do this. And so with that, I will sign off. I will say thank you and uh, until next week.